S S S S K vibe maker. Novelist is in the building, man. Don't know S man, what's going on? How about that, man? Started off 2020 in a nice way. Yeah, man. My birthday January just turned 23. Mm-hmm. Dropped um, Inferno on my birthday. You know, like I, I, it's kind of been a running theme. Like, every year I try and drop something on my birthday. Mm-hmm. You know, and just it's just been a blessing to be active. Mm. Hence the song Active. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How does it feel like to actually drop stuff on your birthday? Because, you know, I don't get that feeling. Mm. Not a musician, innit? Like, I mean, and I know artists like to drop music actually on their birthday. Yeah. What is that feeling like? How significant is that? It's just, it's just a, um, it's a landmark. Your birthday is a landmark as it is. But um, to drop a project on your birthday, you know, I, I feel like in the future, I'll be able to look back and say, when I was 23, this is what I was on. Mm. And then there's, there's like a, a audio timestamp mm-hmm. to like kind of showcase the mentality that I had at that time. Mm. So I, I, that's that's one of the main reasons I like dropping music on my birthdays. Straight up. Mm-hmm. It's been a significant um, last few years for you in like, you know, you haven't had the longest career so far, obviously. I mean, yeah. you're early in your career, on your timeline, your history. How yeah. would you break down the beginning of Novelist's career thus far? Boy, what just the whole process? Yeah, laying the foundation, laying the foundation for for a very very massive building. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, I've been making music since I was about six. I started getting known when I was about thirteen because that's when the YouTube culture was a big thing. Like, man, doing freestyles to the cam and that. That's what kind of got me known locally, and then. Ever since then, it's just been just not quitting. Mm-hmm. Cause there's times you feel like, oh, this ain't this ain't for me, or there's times you feel like you want to do something else, but it's just been not quitting. So sometimes people stop me in the street or wherever I'm somewhere, and they say, "Oh, no, if you're a legend or this, this, and that," and I'm thinking, "Cheers, blood!" Like hmm. I didn't even know that. You know what I'm saying? I just you just gotta not quit and just enjoy what you're doing, f- focus on your craft, and that's what I've been doing. So I feel like. Now people know what I'm about. I'm at a stage where I can really show my true character mm-hmm. because there's a foundation there where, you know, people kind of understand, yeah, this is this is who he is. Mm-hmm. Has it felt like an always ascendancy over those significant 10 years since when you was 13, the YouTube generation, yeah. and it kind of got serious then? Yeah, because I count my blessings. That's where uh, I don't re- I don't really quantify or, or qualify a success the way many people do. Like I qualify success as if I said I'm gonna do something, and then I got it done. That's what success is. Mm-hmm. And um, some some of the tasks, like there's there's not much that I said I was gonna do that hasn't been done mm-hmm. in the time I said I want to do it. Do you get me? So yeah, I feel like it's been uh, it's just been an asset. And it's and it's it's only gonna get better for me. Mm-hmm. Do you feel what I'm saying? So I'm happy about that. What is your take on the the current musical landscape of what's happening at the moment? There's varying things. You know what I mean? Grime has been having this up and down. People obviously um, mainly associate you with the grime sound. Yeah, the yeah, draw yeah. things been popping. The Afro wave, Afro swing things popping. The yeah. UK rap things popping. What's your take on the UK music landscape at the moment? I mean. Sonically, I enjoy the, the the blend of what's going on. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm a man that I listen to a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't shout from the top of the houses about everything. Mm-hmm. And I'm not always going to post who I'm feeling or, you know, because I'm a fan in it. Like, I'm not necessarily going to just... You kind of you kind of got to be careful what you put your word to as well. Mm-hmm. But there's a lot going on that I enjoy. I like to see... I just, I just like to see people... Uh, elevating as well from an artist perspective, not just from a fan perspective. And I feel like the UK is economically getting better. Um, you know, there's is, is, there's always going to be that struggle of like, you know, the newcomers like trying to get heard. That's just that's just in life, whether, whether you work in music, in business, whatever you do, if you're new, there's always going to be that kind of push before before you're birthed out. You know, but generally, I feel like just just the the way the the, the whole thing's going, it's it's incrementally expanding like worldwide. It wasn't it wasn't always like this. Even when I f- first came out, there wasn't so much 
um, p- potential and possibilities. I know the potential was always there, but we didn't we didn't see all the possibilities. Like when I first started getting heard on the radio, and I was getting booked in Bristol, for example, I'll get to the rave. I didn't realize the whole dance would know my lyrics. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you have to like experience things to know what's what's actually really going on. So I'm sure there's a lot more working in our favour that we can't see. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, man, I'm I'm kind of happy with the state of things. And I feel like many doors have been opened uh, for, for newcomers, guys like myself even, to just mm. not capitalise on, but, but utilise, if that makes sense. Some brothers try to tax the energy. I had to write them off. Yeah. That's some of the lines that you hear on Break Bread, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, First yeah. First, yeah. bef- before we get into details of that line, have you done your taxes? Has your taxes been listen, submitted? That's the listen, question. I don't disclose my business. <laughs> <laughs> Straight yeah, up. Yeah. All right, so when we're talking about that line, you know, brothers try to tax the energy, how to write them off. You know what mm. I mean? Expand on what you mean with that, man. I mean, anyone who knows that like, there's such thing as tax write-off, innit? Mm. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's just a play on words. You know, sometimes you got to, you got to um, not sweep things under the rug, but you, you got to get rid of certain things mm-hmm. in life. And, and I feel like just on my come up, I've had all kind of mad experiences, you get me? And I don't believe in, in um, I don't believe in burning bridges, but I do believe in walking on different bridges. Oh, for sure. You feel what I'm saying, blood? Mm. So now I'm just taking certain different routes and, mm. you know, that's it. What I have to say about that and what I take from that line as well is because in normal life, you just have leeches around you, people that just mm. want to be around you because you've got money, people right, that want to be around you when things are going good. But as a creative, yeah. as a musician, you will have artists that are around you to try and steal your wave and your vibe and they will try and repackage it like it's their own. Yeah, Do you know yeah, what I'm saying? Basically. So that's what I take from that line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Try to tax the energy, how to write them off. Yeah, car, everything's an energy. The things you say is an energy, you know? It's yeah. like, vibrations fam like I'm talking in terms of physics mm-hmm. I mean it's been said that energy can't die so like if someone's trying to tax from your eternal source you kind of got to put a cap on that at some point cheese no cap no cap that's <laughs> it <laughs> no cap you got to put a cap on it no cap you yeah. know what I mean yeah, exactly so um the end of January, you tweeted that Inferno, your latest project, should be a movie. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. What do you mean by that? Like, there should be a visual to it. Literally, you know, sometimes when you hear, like, some synth wave music, like, that, you know that 80s vibe? Mm-hmm. You see, like, the neon lights. They often post, like, DeLoreans. And mm-hmm. You know, like, there's a visual aesthetic to it. Mm-hmm. I feel like Inferno's got its own mm-hmm. aesthetic, which is for me to create, but... It was like, you know, sometimes Twitter, you just, you think aloud and, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So I, I, I kind of like, sometimes I put those things out there to see the opinions of, of those who's interested in what I do. It's good to think aloud, especially on Twitter, man. Yeah, Ventilation. Sometimes. sometimes. We breathe, man. Ventilate. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you the type of guy that burns a lot of incense in the yard, in the house and stuff? Nah, I've never been one of those dudes. Oh, for real? You don't no, like the incense? I like candles. Straight up. Yeah, I'm not really on the incense thing. I like candles though. Like, I like, um, you know them candles that might cost you like 40 pounds or 60 pounds. With the know, scents and all of that, yeah? You know this candle's like got to last you like six months or a long time. They last that long? But if some candles last for a time, brother. How big is the candle that lasts six months, man? No, big. It's not, not, not yeah. a small candle. And do you know what else? If you spend a lot of money on it, you're not going to be burning it all the time. You're straight up, man. But um, like I remember one time I bought a, um, a Dior candle, yeah? Blood, the minute you light this thing, your whole house is like getting radiated with this smell. Mm-hmm. You feel me? So, yeah, like I do I do like lighting things up. But yeah, man. Shouts to the candle crew, you know yeah. what I'm saying? We got the candle Don't crew. Done, no. Yeah. And oh, I can do it, man. I could do it. And oh, Yeah, it took me a little time to like master that, you know. You know what? I got that styley from Flirt D, man. Oh, straight. Yeah. That's a good homage, though, man. Some people, again, when we talk about taxing waves, some people will get like something from someone and won't pay credit, give credit to the person, man. Yeah, enough. You know, it is two of my biggest inspirations when it comes to like. Uh, sonic freedom that's what I call it mm. you know like being able to do whatever you want mm. is uh, D-double and Flirt a D I feel like them man stretch the boundaries mm-hmm. in a certain way so 
Like whenever man hear me f- say and oh da, 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 remember that that's a flirt of D mm-hmm. kind of um inspired thing. Shouts to flirt of D man, yeah, shouts to S O K and that, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. So major player, this is that wave music, man. This is that wave rap. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Talk to me about the inspiration behind this. You know what, like I grew up on a lot of West Coast music. I spent a lot of time in the West Coast as well. Mm-hmm. Of America. And Grew up on a lot of um, like infamous mob, mm. mob deep. Ah, it makes sense now. Yeah, do you yeah, get what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I yeah. got the balance of both when it comes to, and the thing is, growing up in the UK, I wasn't really on a rapping thing until I got to a certain age where I wanted to start really expressing myself a certain way and saying certain things. Mm-hmm. Like I've always rapped, but in terms of actually putting my rap out there. Mm-hmm. And I know that my rap is better than a lot of rap that's mm-hmm. out. Do you get me? Mm. Because it's my authentic mix of what I actually grew up on. Mm-hmm. So I'm not really following like what's current right now. So mm-hmm. when you hear my stuff, it's pretty reminiscent of what was happening in the 90s, but it still has a certain um, certain new wave to it, if that mm. makes sense. There was a line in the song where you said, um, laughing at them brothers trying to sound like Darth Vader or something like that. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? I find that I find that hilarious. It's so funny, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I find that hilarious. <laughs> like, you know like guys are rapping and they're not even rapping in their their, their true voice. Do you know why yeah. that causes a problem? Because when it comes to live events and stuff, and when you have to like raise the energy in that, yeah, you can't keep the same voice when you're trying to amplify yeah. your voice as well. That is so technical. That's taxing on your throat. Yeah, and, and for me, yeah, when I wrote that bar, yeah, it was more it was more about w- the content of what man's saying than even how man sounds. Because mm. um, I give you an example. You see, like someone like Gigs, yeah, Gigs like Gigs Gigs is talking voice is different to his rapping voice. Mm. He, he's not even including in what I'm talking about. I'm not thinking about someone like him because, like, he's a prime example of someone who uses their voice in a different way, yeah, to how how he commonly speaks. But I'm I'm more talking about man who talk the most crud like to me Darth Vader's like a super villain isn't it mm-hmm. and really when you if you watch Star Wars you know, he's a normal brother under all of that <laughs> he's just got the thing that changes his voice yeah, do you know up. what I'm saying like straight. he walks around in some dark coat like on some bad man thing but mm-hmm. really mm-hmm. he's 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 Luke he's, I swear he's Luke Skywalker's dad yeah yeah you know what yeah, I'm saying like yeah. he's a calm brother fam under all of that blood, but mm. he's convinced himself that he's a bad man, isn't it? And L- let I me clarify like something as well, like, because there is a difference between an artist putting on a voice and having a perform a performance voice. Yeah. Because you're talking voice, and when you go into, like, energy and, like, sort of adrenaline mode, your voice naturally changes. Because exactly. you have to, like, amplify your voice. Man can That's do what different they want. to changing your voice, though, to actually changing your voice. Yeah. A lot of men do that, but you know what it is? To be honest, yeah, creatively, man can do what they want, innit? <laughs> man, it's the, that's the truth, innit? But yeah. just, I just don't really, um, I just find it funny when man try to do that aggressive thing to sound a certain way. Yeah, like, I hear you. So I, I draw man out because, you know, sometimes, yeah, some things need to get drawn out. Mm, for sure. Mm. What is a major player to novelist, man? What's a major player in the game to novelist? Someone you can't, you can't take away where it is they're on, mm. because they're actually on it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like there's a there's a lot of people that go on like major players, but who what who are you major to? Mm-hmm. Or did you make yourself major, mm-hmm. or are you are you really that? You know what I'm saying? Like I believe in being excellent, and when you're excellent, man can't undo that, mm. no matter what. You know, we, 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 there's this term out there, industry plant and whatnot. I don't like to use that term because I don't really, I don't really like to be critical of too many other people. But at the same time, there's dudes who's not the legit thing, mm. so you automatically ex- excluded from that category of a major player because mm. you're being played. <laughs> I had a conversation the other day about industry plants. Mm. Do you think there are a significant amount of artists out here that are industry plants? Because I mind my, my own business, I don't know. Mm. 
But you know when you bark certain people in the flesh or you come across certain people and and their, their energy's all the way off compared to what they was putting their self out as you think, well, like, you must be crafted by something else. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? The crafted. Yeah. Like You're crafty, you know. Yeah, You're crafty. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You must be <laughs> by something else. Like, that's not, um, that's not like, you know, homegrown and organic. Like, it's a GMO thing. Like, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I don't want to come across as that guy who's just critical. But at the same time, in life, you can't, you can't ignore what's in front of you, blood. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't talk about things that are fake. Mm -hmm. You get me? That's how I see myself in it. Like everyone's opinion can, people are entitled to their own opinion. So I don't mind in it. I think a major part of being a major player is your contributions to the game as well. Because yeah. just because you've been out here for a long time, that doesn't make you a, a vet. That doesn't make you a legend. Doesn't make you anyone. Doesn't make you a legend. You just know what I'm saying? You've been here. It just means you've been here. But like contributions to the game is like your impact. Um, maybe the way that you've changed your sound, your influence, people that you've brought through. Mm. It doesn't necessarily have to be sales. It doesn't necessarily have to be the amount of money you've earned. But exactly. the things that I mentioned prior, they're very significant. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I, and I like what you what you touched on with that because I'm off the record. I've put in work mm. in various different ways. So when you're really one of those people. I can say on my chest I'm a major player and, and no one can't really say nothing. Mm -hmm. Do you get me? And I, I, I like being able to exercise a true authority. I don't like fake authority. You know, like people over assert their sort of, you know, the fake it till you make it thing. Mm -hmm. I'm not a believer of fake it till you make it. Mm -hmm. I, I believe in just, just like know yourself. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Know yourself know out your, here. Know yourself. And if, get me. If who you are as a major player, say that. Straight up. You get me? So pay what is owed. You and Teddy, silencer. Yeah. Um, come on, man. You're stating the obvious. Yeah. Pay what is owed, man. Pay what is it's owed. It's not really man. a discounting on a regular basis. You nah, know what I'm saying? Nah, it's not that, man. It's <laughs> pay what is owed, blood. Yeah. Like, I believe that in life, yeah, every man deserves what they deserve. You don't deserve what you don't deserve, mm. <laughs> but you deserve what you deserve. So pay what is owed. Shall I say, when it comes to this, like, um, being paid for something. The reason why undercutting yourself is very bad, yeah, is because you've set um, you've set the bar of what people think that you're worth, for starters. Mm. And then when you set the bar of what it's supposed to be, what you think you're worth, is that people get an idea of where you're at. If you undersell yourself, you're just totally underselling your brand. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's never productive. I'd yeah. rather do something for free. <laughs> yeah, and, and actually, and that, that sometimes that rubs people up the wrong way because it's like, oh, my money ain't good enough. No, it's just you gotta understand that it's either free or, or it's, it's either for free or the fee. For sure, it ain't less. But even when it's free, though, there's other strings attached to it. Though you yeah, get what yeah, I'm saying, yeah. and it can only maybe be once. It's not a regular thing like yeah, that. You yeah, get yeah, me? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> How's it working with silence, huh? Teddy? That's my dog, man. Teddy, like he's just when we're in the studio, he's just on what he's on. He's not on a long thing. I say, Teddy, do this. Or, or what do you think about boom, boom, boom? He's not one of these egotistical guys mm -hmm. who's like kind of, pardon me. He's not one of these guys with an ego who just trying to like control things. He he wants to make the best product. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? Or, the, or the, just the best sounding thing. So I like working with him, man. Mm -hmm. I got I, I'm a producer myself in it, so I got ideas. And mm -hmm. You know, I, I like that 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 combination of just coming up with things together. Mm -hmm. um, we already spoke about artists putting on voices and putting on things when we was referencing major player, the Darth Vader thing. Something that I've been thinking about recently is how many artists out here in this UK thing are making music based upon a wave as opposed to what they're passionate about? Uh, bro, I don't know, man. I don't know because I remember, like, you see, like, for example, yeah, earlier on I spoke about Giggs. He's a pioneer. And why I mention him is because Giggs is almost like, I don't want to say he's like Wiley, not personality wise, but I mean, he's someone that you could look up to in a sense where you say, like, after he came out, there was like a thousand of him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just like spawning all, like bare little other people trying to mm -hmm. be my man and we've seen that happen with 
with Graham, we've seen it happen with Drill, we've seen it happen with like, like even Jay Huss or Naira Marley, mm -hmm. Sneak Bow. We see, like, you know what I'm saying? We mm -hmm. see when something's popping, like really, like, you know, like brothers who come and make an impact. Yeah. Even with me in the Graham thing, like there's a billion little novelists out there. Mm -hmm. But I, I take it as a compliment. I don't get offended. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, there's a, people follow what they think is popping. Do you get what I'm saying? They follow, they do what they think is popping. But you see, when you're when you're someone who who's willing to swim against the tide, you don't really care about that. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the reason why I'm influential and those other guys who I mentioned just before are influential is because they they were swimming against the tide. Mm -hmm. Do you feel what I'm saying? Like, man, just don't. Man's not respond, responsive for what the next man's on. Mm -hmm. Anyone who just picks up your music can see that you're on your own wave. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's something I love about you, man. Like your style as, a, as an approach to the microphone, you've got different rhyme patterns. You're not overly like aggressive with it. You're not yeah. overly cursive with it. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You've got your own production That's style, your own beat choice, your own vibe, your own. And when you got that, you know that it's not, it's not a, um, a coincidence that you have the fan base that you have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, and you know what? It's taken me a long time to fathom who I am. Because mm. not everyone's going to tell you. Mm. Some man's just going to like be like, they're not going to tell you. They're just not going to tell you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, I was, I've just always been fixated on being myself. But you, you can do that, but not fully understand the impact. Like, the impact's like, it's a serious thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And now I'm at a stage where I just wanna, I wanna gift people with the lessons that I've learned, give people with the vibes that I've came up with and my interpretations of them mm -hmm. and just, cause there's nothing new under the sun, but there's new combos. Mm -hmm. You know no, For saying? real, new combos, man. Shout out to the Street Fighter crew, yeah? Yeah. Dude, Don't know. There's, there's new combos, <laughs> but For real. You know. The collaboration that you had with AJ Tracy was significant on the Labrick Grove remix. Yeah. With General Levy as well. That was nice, man. Yeah, that was, uh, that was when I was in California. I, I messaged him, car. Um, like AJ's not someone I see often. Mm -hmm. I don't see I don't see AJ much. Like we used to we used to be around each other a lot, and I just thought let's kind of like reconcile mm -hmm. musically. So I messaged him. I said, "Yo, fam, you want to make some music?" Mm -hmm. He's like, "Yeah, man, I'm on it. I got this thing. I got this uh, tune." I said, "All right, cool." So I sent him my tune. My tune with him is not out yet. Um. And then he sent me Labrock Grove. I did Labrock Grove. He did his verse for my thing. Mm -hmm. And that's that's that that was that. You get me? Simple things. Simple blood. Where are you at with the lyrical pugilism, man? Because it's not always necessarily beef. Now, at the top that's, of this year, 2020. That's, that's let, let me let me get into it though. <laughs> the top of this year, 2020, we see uh, a battle like people hadn't seen in a long time between Wiley and Stormzy. A lot of MCs are jumping out at the moment and getting into the sends. We haven't <laughs> had that for a little while. What that's do you feel about it, man? The lyrical pugilism that's going on. What I was cutting you to say is, bro, that's the first time I've ever heard the word pugilism. For real? Yeah. People like that, and I'm continuing to mention it still. Yeah, yeah, I like, no, I like that. What's, what is pugilism? Pugilism is just a battle. It's a battle, man. Do you know what I mean? Pugilism. So, yeah. No one wants no pugilis pugilism <laughs> with me, bro. That's what I know. For sure. How do you respond to sends, though? People sending for you? Pulling up on, man. For sure? Yeah. You're so not keeping <laughs> it lyrical, no? <laughs> no, cause, nah, why not? Because I don't need to do that. Even if it's just in the, in, in, in the aid of sport, <laughs> lyrical sport. Listen, you see, you see every like real sport, yeah. Like the the difference between sports and this thing is, sports and fights and whatnot, they're arranged. Mm? Do you get me? Man, know beforehand what they're getting into, and there's mm -hmm. a check. Mm -hmm. that here, for some reason, guys think they could just say what they want to say. But it doesn't. Mm. I didn't grow up like that. Straight up, <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Like, mm. So. So sometimes, you want to nip it in the bud before it gets wild. Sometimes you've got to chat, man, say, yo, bro, like, I, I didn't appreciate that. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Like, oh, I just talk to man. Mm -hmm. And then whatever happens, happens, man. Oh, man. Maybe but, that's yeah. the reason why not many people are calling you out then. I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to say that. Like, I'm, not, I'm not the baddest man on the block. That's not, that's not where it is. It's just, I just don't believe in that. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, old school, 
Like, you see, like me and Cado and that, like that was silly, man. Like, but mm-hmm. it's still, like something that people love. Mm-hmm. Me and Cado was like, we're brethren now. Like, chat, chat him. How you doing? Like, you know, mm-hmm. on a normal thing. Mm-hmm. We don't even talk about music when we talk. So I'm not really into the um, dissing man thing. Like, mm-hmm. it's, it's, just miss me with that. I don't. I don't think it's the best. Like you, you may as well collaborate mm-hmm. and go back to back on a song and whose verse was harder. Straight. I think that's where people like the Wiley and Kano clash back in the day because man, they're just back to back. Yeah, just back and forth, and it was cool. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. it wasn't no. I believe from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Mm-hmm. That's something that that Christ said. And I believe that because I've I've noticed it. Like sometimes I don't I don't talk when I'm around people, and mm. I, some people say things you think raw. You know what I'm saying? So someone couldn't say something that's not in them, and some of the things I hear guys saying, I think that's a madness. Like, like, mm. like, like you meant that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm. You might say a sport or whatever you meant that. Because why would you say that? You For the mean? fans, though, it seems to just create some next type of hype. It's a madness. Like, yeah, I'll, like I'll, they, the fans the love it. Me. They love mm. it. And it's like, it, it gets more views and traction and visibility than just like normal stuff a lot of the times. Man, it's I'm, a publicity stunt as well. It is. I'm, bro, I'm a very articulate person. So I'm, I'm ready to, def- to defend myself with words at any time. <laughs> like, I am, but I just, not, I just not... I don't like having to be in a situation where I have to have a contentious yeah. situation with, with someone friction else. friction and all of that. Yeah. It's long, blood. Straight up. So I know you have an intention to release a lot of projects um, inspired by fire yeah. um, in, the f- in the near future. Mm. Talk to us about that and also talk to us about when we're going to get a follow-up to Novelist Guy, like a next album. <laughs> uh, prob- probably like a follow-up to the album, maybe like 2021. Because mm. I'm, I'm still... Like I'm an independent artist, like, mm. and I know a lot of people say that and whatnot, but mm. literally everything I do is from my bedroom, mm-hmm. just from my yard. Or say I want to like back out my laptop at like an Ace Hotel or something. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I'm still working on building my my team and my infrastructure. And for my next album, I want it to come with a certain level of impact. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Um, and that takes that's a that, that's a process. In terms of making music, I can make music any any mm-hmm. given hour of the day. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So in preparation for my album, I'll probably give it a little time because I want to do right by it, by the music. But um That's why you're releasing all these fire projects then, yeah? Yeah, just going in. You know them ones there. Just 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 so people are they they're having something to enjoy. Mm-hmm. Inferno's the first one. Inferno's the first one, the next one's Rain Fire. Mm-hmm. Um the one after that's called A Blaze. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and you're just continuing on from there. Yeah, we're just going hard. But uh, the, the album, I'm not going to say the album's name. Cause I, hmm. but you'll I'm, know in due time. You'll know in due time. Mm-hmm. But I know the album's name already and whatnot. So with these sequence of fire projects, is there going to be a significant sonic difference? Like sonic sound Mm. Soundscape wise, is there going to be a significant change in sound throughout these different projects? Yeah, because some of them, some of them are going to be totally left of what man think mm-hmm. I'm going to do. Like, you might have a couple that's more like reminiscent of Inferno, mm-hmm. but uh, bruv, I've said it in interviews before. I'm a man that grew up on like pet shop ways. I grew up on some real fucked out mm-hmm. music. I grew up on. Man said Pet Shop Boys then went to fucked out music. Let's yeah. just clarify that. Yeah. Pet Shop Boys ain't fucked out music, fucked yo. Out a bit. <laughs> no, it, it, then, then you might go to some some jazz. Then you might go to like, you know, Wham. Like, you know Straight what I'm saying? Up. Or you might go to, you know, Tony, Tony, Tone. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, about like, Raphael Sadiq and them, man, there. Raphael some Tidra, Tidra Moses and that, yeah? Bro, listen, um, my friend, my friend, my friend Maisie, yeah? She's an um, artist and, and a model, mm-hmm. Ginger Girl. And she showed me about one Raphael Sadiq tune uh, with T Boz. Mm-hmm. Bro, this tune, this tune's like, I've not stopped playing it since so she showed it to me. Straight up. Recently, you get me? So I'm like, my palette, my musical palette is, is, is wide and I like to paint from my musical palette. Mm-hmm. Do you get me? I don't, I don't really want to. 
I don't want to be taken for a certain kind of guy. Mm-hmm. Just just take me as what I'll give. Straight up. Do you know what I'm saying? You just said there about being independent and being truly independent. Everything comes from your bedroom. Yeah. Are you trying to keep it independent? Is that your ammo? Is that what how you think? That you just want to stay independent forever? Are you anti-major label signing? I'm I'm anti unrighteousness. And that's what I see a lot of mm-hmm. in the business. Now people say business is business, which is true. But at the same time, yeah, I believe in moral morally doing the right thing and I feel like a lot of these deals are not morally uh good. That's not just a generic statement. That's something we've seen over the decades. Mm-hmm. You know, you watch any any major artist in, in the in the industry interviews a lot of them will tell you don't even sign mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying while in the midst of even being signed mm-hmm. they say don't even sign so I'd, I'm not I'm not a man who's fearful of it at all it's mm-hmm. not that it's just someone would have to come with a deal inspired by God himself mm-hmm. for me to be interested because if you ain't trying to do right by me then just avoid me straight up that's all it is mm-hmm. it's not it's not I'm not opposed to signing I'm not opposed to the labels I think they facilitate a lot of good stuff for for who it is they work with. But at the same time, I've for me as an individual, I've not heard a deal, uh, I've not been approached with a deal that I like. Mm-hmm. I've not been approached with, uh, I've not been approached by too many straightforward people either. Mm-hmm. So to me, that world has a lot of bizarre things going on that I don't really want to partake mm-hmm. in unless someone's coming and, you know, they, they got their integrity and they mm-hmm. see my vision and want to, you know, uh, want to be involved in the journey fam car this this thing what man's dealing with ain't a joke mm-hmm. hey man we've had a great conversation today my interviews are hotter you know they're not cold <laughs> yeah, my yeah. interviews are hotter it was me. a decent conversation isn't yeah, it yeah very that yeah, was you know a good conversation hey safe for coming true man i respect sk man. SK vibe maker